uh, you are there on whatsapp also right now yes sir okay i'll send you the link of the video lecture that is happening right away so you can okay. you know just see how much lag is there or if there is yes, sir. students trying to talk you can just Shall I start? Yeah, just a moment. I'll just send you the link. Just a moment. Okay. Okay. No time. No time. Okay. I got it, sir. You got it, right? No? Yeah. Yes. So this, this will basically help you see if there's any you know students try to interact with you. You can see in the live chat what they're trying to type and everything. Okay, so should I start uh, open this also? Yes, ma'am. You can open that in your phone only. That's right. Hmm. In the phone, you can look at the chat, and then uh, while looking at the laptop, you can continue your session that way. So once in a while, if you keep looking at your phone, you'll be able to see what is the Chat that I know if they have questions. Yeah. Okay. You can either pause it or otherwise mute it totally. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll reduce the volume. Yeah. So, uh, right from here, all set. Uh, so, you can start right away. Okay. Sir. Good luck, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. discuss a uh, few questions today uh, on radiology medicine as well as oral pathology the first question will begin with an union of the roots of adjacent teeth through the cementum is referred to as so the fusion now first option will be the C that is fusion fusion it is the fusion of two separated tooth germs Okay, uh, before calcification. Next is the torodontism. Torodontism, it is uh, the large, it is uh, where there is uh, the furcation. It is uh, at the uh, placed very apically. That is, uh, <coughs> it is shifted apically, leading to larger pulp chambers. So, because it appears larger. Uh, in size, that is the pulp of the chamber appears larger in size, and you call it as a bull tooth. It appears like a, um, a bull tooth, that is why it is called as torodontism. Next is the gemination. A single tooth germ gets uh, bifurcated or it divides into uh, two separate tooths. That is, one will be a normal uh, tooth, and the other one will appear like a supernumerary tooth here. Next one is the concrescence, that is fusion of two teeth through roots, that is through cementum it is. So it can be because of any trauma or uh, uh, because of calcific uh, orthodontic movements, also tooth movements. Okay. Now with the concrescence, it is a form of fusion. We have uh, already formed tooth are there and there is fusion of the uh, tooth through cementum. It is mostly associated tooth with the uh, concrescence are these uh, maxillary second and third molars. So here the answer is concrescence. Next is moving to second one that is assist under the tongue caused by obstruction of salivary glands such as 
assist it is called as so mucosal mucosal it has got two variants that is uh, extra vasation phenomenon as well as uh, a true cyst which is lined by epithelium these are because of the rupture of the minor salivary glands and the mucin will uh, flow out uh, leading to a cyst that is mucosal okay, next one is uh, the ranula the ranula itself even this is also a kind of mucosal or itself it's a mucus extra vasation phenomenon but uh, here the outstanding the characteristic feature here is it is exclusively formed in the uh, floor of the mouth so the other clinical features of ranula are it is brilliantly translucent and a bluish hue color it resembles an, uh, the belly of the frog and that is why the name is ranula is been given so this is the answer for this is ranula <clears throat> it's a clinical term mucus extravasation a type of extravasation phenomenon next one is odontogenic cyst having a large medullary spread without obvious swelling is characteristic of Okay, so here generally what we do, uh, the enormous, the uh, odontogenic cyst and tumors, they tend to spread uh, leading to buccocortical expansion. Okay, most of the tumors and cysts, they cause buccocortical expansion or either they will even erode the cortical plate. But in case of odontogenic uh, keratocyst, what happens, there is medullary spread, hence it is always detected in the later stages when it reaches the enormous size only it will uh, cause the buccocortical expansion otherwise it is it initially spreads through medullary spaces and that is why okay see is the one this is one outstanding feature of Answer for this is odontogenic keratocyst, which is having medullary intramedullary spread. That does all the other options that is dentogenic cyst, radicular cyst, and CEOC has got buccocortical expansion. The next one is vital staining. Fourth question we have vital staining used for diagnosis of leukoplakia. Uh, the options here toledin blue and this uh, leukoc iodine, iodine blue they are always used in combination. What is uh, the significance of using this toledin blue and leukoc iodine is, is to detect the dysplastic changes that is even though uh, some of the uh, lesions they don't appear that aggressive but when by using these stains the pre-therapeutic assessment is possible with these using by using this stain. So the answer is both the toledin blue as well as leucol iodine is used for determination of the malignant degrees of determination of malignant lesions. Then when the iodine retention is seen, then uh, it shows that there is well differentiated malignant lesion. And when it de doesn't get decolorized, then it is a poorly differentiated lesion. So moving to next. The portion of radiograph that is white or uh, is called as. So whiter portions usually called as 
radio opaque. So the reason we have. So because this is just nothing but because of attenuation of X-rays. So hard tissues like uh, hard tissues and harder objects, that is observers, strong absorbers, they will uh, completely absorb the X-ray radiation and they do not allow the X-ray to pass through. And that is why it will appear as a white area or lighter area. That is the unexposed silver halide crystals on the film. You can see the unexposed silver halide crystals when they are uh, fixing is done, then it is being removed and it will appear as white. So that is nothing but the radio opaque. So we have the metallic restorations, then uh, we have this bone, okay, and uh, enamel, dentin, so heart tissues, they appear radio opaque in a decreasing order. That is from metallic restoration, highly dense, then comes the bone, then comes, that is the cortical bone, then enamel, and then dentine we have so in this order it comes so low dense object that is which allows the x-ray to pass through like soft tissues air so that will appear radiolucent that is it allows the x-rays to pass through and that is why the high silver halide crystals are com converted to black metallic silver greens when they are developed answer is radio opaque Physical and hemostat. Physical and hemostat. It is different from surgical hemostat. Why? So this physical and hemostat. It is used for uh, as in case of uh, dental radiography. It is used as a holder. You can see the picture. It is used as a holder. So how it is different from other hemostats? Other hemostats have got uh, transverse serrations whereas this uh, runs across the uh, the lengthwise along the lengthwise the serrations are seen in this picture you can see the uh, serrations are seen lengthwise so that is how it is different from other uh, hemostats so uh, what are the advantages of using this hemostat as a holder is in case of Christmas, when the patient is unable to open the mouth and if it causes gag reflex in some patients, poorly, very sensitive patients who, has, who are very sensitive and they have frequent ga uh, gag reflex and then uh, cost effective also. So these are the uh, various advantages of using the hemostat. So one thing that is a point you have to remember it is the serrations on the beak. They are running lengthwise and not and not in the transverse section extensive squamous metaplasia Extensive squamous metaplasia, sometimes with keratin formation within the islands of tumor cells, is seen in. So, this is here they have given options as plexiform amyloblastoma, acanthomatous uh, amyloblastoma, granular cell amyloblastoma. So, the, all these three are the variants of uh, amyloblastoma only. But uh, this kind of histopathological appearance is seen in acanthomatous amyloblastoma. So, we have tumor islands here. So other variants, these are the variants of uh, amyloblastoma follicular, acanthomatous, plexiform, granular cell type, desmoblastic type and basal cell type. So extensive squamous metaplasia, tumor islands has got extensive squamous metaplasia within the center, uh, in the central portion and at the center again we have epithelial islands that uh, the keratin formation is seen. So this uh, variant will give such appearance that is acanthomatous amyloblastoma. What happens in granular cell pattern here? Here also the tumor islands that is tumor islands means the epithelial is nothing but the odontogenic epithelium. Uh, it will resemble a enamel like uh, epithelium, enamel, enamel epithelium and the center of the cytoplasm there it is granular Okay, it has got some eosinophilic granules. That is how it is different from the other pattern. 
and in case of plexiform pattern plexiform itself the name itself will suggest that net like cords of or sheets of epithelium they are seen in a fibrous uh, stroma so acanthomatous ameloblastoma is the answer fibrous dysplasia they are the lesions are usually they are elliptical in shape okay as such and another condition is uh, usually in the later stages what happens the <coughs> boundary is not being confined here because it will uh, uh, blend with the normal bone and uh, there will not be any particular borders but the shape usually it initially it resembles the elliptical shape so we have uh, two types of uh, fibrous dysplasia here monoostatic and polyostatic this is in one uh, single bone and here it involves multiple bones and under this again we have uh, two syndromes jackelichtensen syndrome and mckeown albright syndrome okay so in if it is monoostatic so, uh, for our concern that is for a jaws head and neck region monoostatic fibrous dysplasia is very common Uh, in about uh, 80 to 85 percent of the total cases we see, and uh, both of the uh, genders are equally affected here. And uh, in case of uh, the jaws, that maxillary and mandible, maxilla is more affected. And if when maxilla is affected, it may involve even other uh, bones of the skull also, like frontal bones, sphenoid bone, etc. And if it is involving mandible, then exclusively it will involve only mandible. then coming to the age it is uh, starts from the young age itself infant age but it is being detected that is the patient will go on uh, will not be noticing this until unless he reaches the adult age when it increases it really causes the bulging of the face something like that it's a very slow growing process then other characteristic features that is radiographic features are uh, there is abnormal poor uh, bone that is the abnormal bone trabecular is seen in a fibrous stroma so on the radiograph it appears as a ground glass gives gives ground glass appearance then ha what happens in early stages it is directly it doesn't appear radio opaque that is initial stage that it will because of the fibrous tissue present in the bone that is abnormal uh, tissue it will appear radio lucenty and in the middle stage it appears a mixed okay that is the mottled appearance and in the later stages it appear gives ground glass appearance or then cotton wool like appearance also next is the other features we have narrow narrowing of the periodontal ligament space and because of this uh, abnormal uh, bone uh, deposition we have narrow Uh, PDL, the periodontal ligament space becomes narrower. Then lamina dura becomes ill-defined because the uh, this fibrous dysplasia that it blends with the, the tissue blends with normal bone that is with lamina dura and then hence the lamina dura starts appearing blurred. Next is the other features that is <coughs> the vital structures like inferior alveolar canal they are superiorly placed they are displaced because when the as the lesion grows in size and other structures like floor of the maxillary antrum will also be displaced superiorly and uh, even the uh, antrum starts getting obliterated because of the bone so it will appear is that hazy or uh, radio opaque in the later stages next the density of the other uh, thick bones cortical bones like skull base occiput then other skull bones like sphenoid and uh, roof of orbit and frontal bones they will increase in their density so this is these are the uh, characteristic features the mass of an electron at rest it is about 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 28 grams This is the mass of electron at. Then, what about other the mass of 
protons and neutrons which are present in the nucleus it is 1.67 into 10 raised to minus 24 grams and neutron it is 1.68 into 10 raised to minus 24 grams so in any other questions you can be it can be asked what is the mass of the proton what is the mass of the neutron also here they have asked a question uh, has arisen that is electron mass so the you might get a question like proton mass or neutron mass also and uh, one more uh, thing is what is the difference between the mass of uh, electron and as well as proton and electron and neutron is the here the mass of proton is almost 1853 grams or times sorry times it is less than the mass of electron and neutron it is same almost 1823 times smaller than this uh, lesser than this neutron so remember the mass of proton and neutron are also as well The dental x-ray tube is called as self-rectifying and or uh, the second option is half-wave rectifying both or self-correcting. What do you mean by self-rectifying or half-wave rectifying is we have a power supply that is step-down transformer which will heat the filament and then the, when the filaments get heated up electrons are released and it goes and hits the anode target. Okay, so what happens in alternating current? There is the polarity will go on shifting. Thus, what happens when the polarity shifts? That is, the cathode becomes anode, anode becomes cathode. That is, this happens in case of alternating current. So, to avoid that, to stop that, what happens? Only half of the cycle of this alternating uh, current is being used. That is, 1 by 60 uh, seconds per cycle is being used. That is, per second only. Uh, 1 60th that is of the second is being used so, uh, so that uh, this is to avoid the heat also that is wearing of the uh, this filament also and the other half of the cycle it will be uh, allowed to rest as a rest that is why it is called as self rectifying or half wave circuit half wave rectifying so almost all the distended uh, x-rays they have got this kind of machines with rectifying machines okay next is dental x-ray tube this okay this next one is dilaceration dilaceration means the curving uh, where the curvature of the root tip the cemental union of root calcified root canals or dysplasia of the dentin so dilaceration it is nothing but the curving of the root tip so, dilaceration is more common with it will mainly affect the root but occasionally even the crown also is being involved here the main causes uh, maybe it is uh, the trauma to the tooth germ during calcification and uh, the commonest tooth which is being affected actually it is molars but anteriors are most uh, first recognized because of the aesthetic purpose so followed by molars it is anteriors but anteriors are of more concern and they are detected early Miculix disease auto, uh, it's a the bilateral swelling of uh, this lacrimal glands or salivary glands they are painless the painless bilateral swelling so leading to dry eyes uh, and dry mouth that is called as miculix disease it's a limb uh, you know uh, there was when it was detected they found out that lymphocytic infiltration was being uh, seen in these glands so that is why it is uh, then it was found that it's an autoimmune condition so or benign lymphoepithelial lesion next question is the 
most common reason for recurrence of uh, odontogenic keratosis of course it is the recurrence are failure to remove all of the uh, original cyst lining within bone new primary cyst formation from additional activated rest or oral basal epithelium and the last option is cyst recurrence whatever the treatment may be okay so both uh, the option the answer for this is both the recurrence are the failure to remove all the cyst lining that is when the it is first of all there is complete enucleation uh, is being done that is a treatment for this okc so when there is when the remnants of this epithelial lining are uh, found in the uh, bony cavity then it can give rise to uh, recurrence or new cyst or uh, the <coughs> This basal uh, oral basal epithelium also can give rise to this is okay. Okay, so the last option cyst recurrence, whatever the treatment may be, though the peripheral osteotomy of the bony cavity can avoid recurrence and uh, chemical cauterization with carnoid solution and can be done to avoid the recurrence. So the up the C is the answer. Here. question 14 it is highest malignant transformation is seen in uh, is seen with spectral leukoplakia varicous leukoplakia and candida leukoplakia and lichen planus spectral leukoplakia it is uh, the leuco it's a mixed kind of uh, lesion that is red and white lesion the red lesion it indicates uh, the atrophic areas uh, the dysplastic changes okay whereas others they have got keratin part keratinized part so when they failed some uh, when they fail to keratinize that is in case of speckled leukoplakia what happens they are more prone for this dysplastic changes and then malignant transformation. And that is why here the answer is A, that is speckle leukopenia. Overall blackness of radiograph is called as, blackness of the radiograph is called as the density, radiographic density. The definition itself will say. It depends on uh, various factors, primary and secondary factors. Uh, the milliampere that is current, the voltage and the exposure time, what happens? It increases the number of photons which will reach the film and hence the density of the radiograph also increases. That is more number of photons will pass through or reaches the film. So the secondary factors are also there. That is the technical factors. Uh, not the technical uh, the processing uh, solutions also as well as the object uh, distance or uh, the source and the object distance so these are the secondary factors which will also increase the density the temperature of the solutions so all this are responsible for the density of the the ren xcp film holders consist of ren xcp is Extended bone holder it is. So this is red XCP holder. Okay, we have uh, uh, the anterior and posterior bite blocks here. The indicator uh, rod is there here, and the locating ring is there. Locator ring. So all these are the parts of RIN XCP holders. This one is used for paralleling cone technique. Increased hyalinization of connective tissue stroma. So this is uh, the options given here are plexiform amyloblastoma, 
Acanthomatous ameloblastoma, granular cell ameloblastoma, so desmoplastic ameloblastoma. This is, all these are variants of ameloblastoma, of course. So increased hyalinization, that is uh, the cause of epithelium, they are seen in the uh, highly uh, fib uh, collagenized stroma. And that is why it is seen in case of, uh, this is seen in case of desmoplastic ameloblastoma. So it's a histopathological feature of desmoplastic ameloblastoma. Islands of cords of odontogenic epithelium in a densely collagenized stroma. The answer is desmoplastic ameloblastoma. Now coming to next one. Histologically, bony trabecular assume irregular shape likened to Chinese characters and they do not display any functional orientation. They are seen in ossified fibroma, fibrous dysplasia, osteoid osteoma, osteoblastoma. So this Chinese letter pattern that is they are uh, nothing but the abnormal bony trabecular oven bone it is seen in a fibrous uh, loosely cellular connective tissue that is fibrous stroma. loosely arranged fibrous stroma we have immature oval bone so these trabeculae they are not connected to each other and they give a pattern they are they appear they or they uh, resemble this chinese letters and that is why uh, this is being compared with the chinese uh, script writing okay so this is uh, the feature radio uh, histopathological feature of fibrous dysplasia Next is um, the another feature that is characteristic feature of this histo uh, fibrous dysplasia. It is throughout the lesion that is every wherever it is, whichever bone is being affected, the histopathological almost is almost same only. It will follow the monotonous pattern only. Whereas other fibrous lesions we have. Uh, like uh, ossifying fibroma and uh, other osteoid osteoma what happens the patterns are different they are multiple different patterns that is either once it will be oval bone or lamellar bone and spheroid particles will be seen so the answer here is fibrous dysplasia which will remember uh, resemble the chinese letter pattern the trabecular bone that is the oval bone will resemble Chinese letter pattern. Most of the mass of an atom it consists of protons, neutrons, electrons, and both protons and neutrons. So mass of the uh, atom, mass of the atom, most the majority of the mass of the atom is present within the nucleus, and then within the nucleus we have protons and neutrons. And uh, regarding the charge of the uh, this uh, nucleons, it is the proton is positively charged, neutron has got neutral charge, it has got no charge, whereas the electron which is revolving around the nucleus, it is negatively charged here and uh, the atomic number is indicated by the number of protons present in the nucleus and uh, denoted as set number of photons in the nucleus okay. that's all charges so every atom uh, the atomic number it is detected by the number of uh, protons present in the nucleus uh, for example uh, we have tungsten so tungsten what have what is the atomic number of tungsten that is it is 74 so it indicates that tungsten has got 74 protons within the nucleus the 
circuit present in the dental x-ray unit are filament circuit high outage voltage circuit both and the last one is last one is as one is anode is anode circuit. Uh, dental x-ray unit has got both the filament circuit and high voltage circuit we have filament circuit is the step down transformer it is the current is passed through this filament that is a tungsten filament to uh, give enough current uh, so that it gets heated up and then releases the number of electrons maximum number of electrons as possible and then to we also need high energy electrons that is to accelerate these electrons we need a potential difference between the cathode and anode which is being provided by the high voltage circuit so the answer is c both high voltage circuit controls voltage between anode and cathode of x-ray tube it provides the high voltage required by the x-ray tube to accelerate the electrons from cathode to anode and then generate the x rays the dental fluorosis can cause or accept so uh, it is a very simple question because fluoride to twist we are supposed to use uh, to uh, you know fluoride therapy is this big one fluoride topical fluoride application all these things we are using for reduction of caries so the one thing which will not occur in case of dental fluorosis is a dental caries but what happens if it is uh, the severity is in increases in case of dental fluorosis the mottling enamel, enamel will get mottled or the hypoplastic enamel is formed when the hypoplasticity is there, then they are easily prone for this attrition as well as even the caries also. It can lead to, uh, it can reach the pulp quick. So the your answer is dental caries. Cause here is being given. Prolonged ingestion of fluoride uh, through drinking water in excess of daily requirement. It is associated with dental and skeletal fluorosis. Coming to next question, xerostomia, enlargement of salivary gland and lacrimal gland is seen in. We have come across this question previously, uh, that is Michelix disease, the etiology of Michelix disease, that, is, or that was autoimmune condition. So in the explanation we have discussed that there is bilateral involvement of the salivary and lacrimal glands leading to dry eyes, dry mouth. Okay, so this is nothing but the Michelix disease then if it is along with these features if it is involving uh, having any other systemic conditions also then we are call it as Sjogren syndrome so Sjogren syndrome is a multi-system disorder it is not only involving these uh, salivary and lacrimal glands but also it is associated with other autoimmune conditions like Graves disease or uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis etc so that is an autoimmune condition so that is uh, the reason for this uh, jogren that is etiology so any of the way the question can be asked so you, uh, in this way you can prepare three questions that is etiology of michelix disease uh, this kind of michelix disease proper and michelix syndrome this we have an option called as michelix syndrome earlier Michelix, uh, Jogren syndrome was got uh, confused with Michelix disease. Then they uh, discovered that uh, the difference is, uh, is Michelix disease exclusively it will involve only the salivary and lacrimal gland. Whereas if it is involving other syndrome, uh, other system, then you call it as Michelix syndrome. But later the term Jogren syndrome was coined. The recurrence rate of odontogenic keratosis is in the range of okay, the highest recurrence rate is seen in case of odontogenic uh, keratosis. It is about 70 percent, 
and of the uh, lesions. Then uh, the causes we have discussed earlier. It is uh, the failure to remove the original cyst lining. That is, some of the in, uh, cystic lining will remain, or it can be a new cyst is being formed from the uh, dental lamina, cyst of uh, the rest of the dental lamina or the epithelium, oral basal epithelium also. So the recurrence can be prevented through uh, peripheral osteotomy of the cavity or by chemical cauterization. Answer is 70%. The Bowman's disease. Bowman's disease, it is nothing but uh, intraepidermal carcinoma, the other name for uh, Bowman's disease. So you can please note down about the Bowman's disease. <coughs> So the causes, there is a long list of cause for this Bowen's disease. Uh, first of all, uh, it is the condition which will affect the skin, that is epithelium of the skin leading to scaly patches or uh, it is it resem and it resembles the solar actinic keratosis also. But the difference is in the, between the solar actinic keratosis and Bowen's disease is Bowen's disease will have a bit larger uh, extension compared to actinic keratosis. So long list, it is a list of uh, etiology for this Bowen's disease that is aging. In case of aging and uh, white skinned people whose, whose skin are very sensitive, chronic sun exposure uh, in fair skinned people and uh, a history of human papilloma virus, uh, especially these strains 16, 18, 34, and 48 strains, and immunosuppression and uh, metallic exposure that is arsenic poisoning. That is, those who are uh, exposed to this uh, from the water through water, or if they are working in a uh, or industries where the arsenic they get exposed to arsen arsenic. The last question here we are discussing here first degree factors of <coughs> density they are all except the milliampere exposure time kilo voltage operating kilo voltage and source and object distance so <coughs> of density we know what, uh, about the uh, degree or uh, definition of this density it is the overall darkness darkening of the ex unexposed film okay, so, so when uh, the density of the uh, film increases through the primary factors like the current tube current the kilo voltage and the exposure time that is the time and the number of electrons are being exposed to the film these are the primary factors which will affect the density of radiograph. Of course, other factors are also there like uh, they are secondary factors. That is uh, the source and the film distance. So one thing I want to tell you is whenever you are preparing for the multiple choice questions, you, you will be preparing simultaneously another extra three questions also. Like for example, if one option A is the answer, the other three, you'll have to form questions for other three uh, options also. Like, okay, what could be the uh, question for this kind of, uh, this answer? What could be the question for this answer? So this is how you, you can uh, form question and then revise it and you can uh, you'll be for learning extra things and preparing so revision is a must for everything Sir, I'm done with this. I finished.
Este. 